Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to be doing a few quick tests on different types of uh, goggles and glasses that you can use to uh, protect your eyes from red and near-infrared light. Um, we went over in a previous video that near-infrared light does not necessarily cause cataracts unless the intensity is too high and that causes heating, or uh, if, if the near-infrared comes along with other heating wavelengths like a, a heat lamp or if it comes along with industrial heat exposure like a furnace or a glass blower or things like that. Um, so if you have a responsibly designed uh, red light therapy device or even with near infrared, uh, it's generally should be safe and beneficial for the eyes. But we know we got a lot of panels on the market that are very high intensity for marketing reasons. Um, this one is we're about six inches away. And we're getting about 75, that 74.5 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Uh, so yeah, that's quite intense. And you know, if you put your face and your eyes right in front of it, um, you probably want to protect your eyes. Um, you know, maybe blocking your, uh, closing your eyes is, is good enough. Or you can try to use some of these blockers or glasses, depending if they included it. Or maybe you just want a different pair that's more comfortable to try out. Um, the first one we're going to test out is this you you see and you can find this on amazon and it's very cleverly marketed as a red light therapy um, blocking glasses it seems to be the first one specifically marketed for that reason um so let's see if it's it's legit so we're just gonna put it right in front here try to block that sensor and you can see it really drops down that to, to the microwatts, like we talked about in the last video, it really dropped down that microwatts. Um, you know, you still see some some near infrared, but that's because it rescaled the the y-axis here. So, um, so yeah, we're getting practically none um, through here. So it's a very trace amount. Again, this is a very sensitive device. It's very good quality. So you get a very trace amount, but it really blocks um, practically everything. Um, so it, it's a, this is a good choice. It's a very dark, it's just kind of a dark black um, kind of look to it. Another hack you can do um, is this uh, kind of welding safety glasses. They're called IR5 or Shade 5, if you can find that. Um, this is the Lincoln Electric. I'll, I'll put some links in it. But um, before this, you could find these kind of... Um, welding safety glasses so um you know they make these for for the purposes of welding that kind of block a lot of the infrared that that could come from, again from occupational hazards not from necessarily leds um so this one dropped it down we still get uh about 1.7 milliwatts per centimeter squared coming through but again that's super low you know low amounts of red and near infrared infrared light is beneficial for the eye so if you want something that, you know, gives you a little bit of beneficial with, you know, and blocking the majority of it, you could go to a shade five, um, like this one. And then we have a shade three. So this is an IR three. So a similar, um, kind of concept, but this is a shade three. You can actually see the lights a little bit easier through the lenses. But even with the shade three, you're only getting, you're still only getting 4.2, you know, that's, you have to change the digits, but about four milliwatts per centimeter squared. So again, that should be perfectly safe again with red and near infrared. Um, you can reduce the intensity and still get some, some benefits for the eyes or maybe your crow's peaks or, you know, around your eyes if you want to reduce wrinkles. Um, so again, and yeah, this is cranking at 71 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And, and this takes it down to four with the shade three. Um, so again, these are really great options. Standard sunglasses really don't do much. You can see it, it's almost transparent. Um, and they don't really block any infrared. So let me try that again. So we're, we're still getting 45 milliwatts per centimeter squared. 
Um, you still get both some red and near infrared. So, it, you know, it takes a little bit of the edge off. If you get a standard pair of sunglasses, maybe that's enough. If you move further away or keep your eyes closed in conjunction with the glasses. Um, or some people put, like, aluminum foil right on the glasses if you just want to black it out. Um, so, you know, there's some hacks as well. Um, now I thought it would be interesting also to test these against some uh, heat lamps. So again, I'm not certifying anything anything for safety. I'm just kind of curious and we, we can have some options of, you know, different types of eye safety. Okay, so we've got the same setup with our heat lamp, except I moved the heat lamp uh, further away because we know we don't want to be too close to a heat lamp. A lot of times they recommend being at least 18 inches away. I, I mean, I would think for the face, um, maybe even you want to be further away. Um, and also I don't want to damage my sensor by being too close to it. Um, so we're only going to get kind of a partial spectrum with this because, uh, you know, this, this doesn't cover the whole spectrum. Um, but so it's more of going to be a relative kind of term. But we see we get 9 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And the maximum it goes up to is, I think, 100, like 1,040-ish. Um, so that way it, it kind of gets cut off. So you don't see the full spectrum. So, and we, you know, for the safety glasses, you won't really know if is if is it really blocking the full spectrum and getting all the protection you need. But at least we can get kind of a, a general sense of do we get a reduction from this. So we're looking for a reduction from you know the nine milliwatts per centimeter squared up there, that nine thousand two hundred and eight number we want to see reduce, and then see what happens with this spectrum. So. Uh, let's start with the UC. So it took a while to get that measurement because uh, it's so low, um, you know, so it drops it down to, again, to that microwatts unit. So it's only 105 microwatts. So it's really dropped it down significantly. So again, it's just a relative spectrum, but dropped it down from, you know, 9 milliwatts per centimeter squared down to, uh, you know, 0.1 milliwatts per centimeter squared or something, you know, something like that. So, um, so that, again, that's a really good reduction. Uh, we don't know the rest of the spectrum, but at least we know, you know, this blocks a lot, a lot of that um, early part of the spectrum. Uh, so let's try the shade 5. Again, you know, these should be rated for that kind of safety in a, a welding situation. Again, it's taken a long time to uh, calculate, because maybe because uh, the measurement's so low. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's a little bit higher. Maybe it picked up some ambient light there, but um, it's 200, so Again, it's like maybe 0.2 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Uh, so really low. And then this is the shade 3. Yeah, and that's that's just a little bit higher at, um, you know, 0.35, you know, milliwatts per centimeter squared. So again, super low with, with all of these, but we don't get the full picture. This is an interesting kind of... Uh, graph we get. Um, so we see, you know, we could use these potentially to help us block some some uh, heat lamps as well. I just made a infrared sauna and I've been using a shade 5 in my own um, DIY heat lamp sauna. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, and I felt like my eyes really needed it. So, so that's why I started using them and then felt like testing them out. 